Hello again, it is I, Derek from Tomcat Gas Training, and welcome to another how-to video. So in this video today, I'm going to show you how I install this clip seal vinyl flooring. But before we get into this video, please could you take some time to subscribe, because it helps the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell, because you want YouTube, if you're new to this channel, to tell you when we're uploading videos. Again, Mondays and Wednesdays if you are new. But, that's waffling and fluffing, so let's get on with it and find out exactly how I installed this vinyl planking flooring for my mother-in-law. Now, this click seal vinyl planking flooring is from the Rero products. So it's waterproof. And it can be installed in kitchens, bathrooms, uh, living rooms, landings, hallways, stairs, anywhere you like. Because it's made of vinyl, so it's not going to bubble up or anything. And it's waterproof. So how cool is that? Better than laminate flooring. Also, on the back of this product is like this rubber backing. Which is actually its own underlay. So you don't even need to put underlay down first. It's already got its own. So that saves even more time when you're installing this uh, vinyl planking. So, now then, without further ado, now you've been introduced to it, let's stop messing around and let's get on with it. Before we get started, let's have a look at the tools and equipment you're going to need to be able to do this job. First of all, always the health and safety stuff. You're going to need these. Knee pads. Because you're going to be on your knees a long time. You're also going to need these. Safety glasses. Because you don't want to be damaging your mince pies. So always use your safety glasses. You're going to need these if you're using power tools. So you're going to need your ear protectors. Because you don't want to go deaf. Can you say something? Anyway. And some of you guys might want to wear these. I never wear these. I just can't work in gloves. Never have. Never will. But a lot of you guys love to work in gloves. That's the health and safety. Let's look at the tools. Next thing, cutting the actual vinyl planks. Now believe it or believe it not, they say you can use a craft knife to be able to uh, cut this planking. I tried it. It works alright going the short way of the plank, but then when you're cutting down the length of the plank, it's not very good. And also if you're not that clever with these things, dangerous. So, they do say you can use these, but I would advise it. What I used to cut down the length of the plank is one of these, a jigsaw. So, uh, you might need one of these. Like I say, you don't need one of these technically because you could use a handsaw as well. But, what I did do is, I went and bought one of these. <laughs> so this is a laminate floor cutter. It also does the vinyl planks as well. 30 quid I paid for this. Best 30 quid I've ever spent. Now I didn't use this to cut down the length of the planks, but I could have done. I just used this for cutting down the short part of the planks and it cut down the time massively. So, 30 quid investment, get yourself one of these. Especially if you're going to do a lot of this stuff. So, that is cutting these vinyl planks. Now, there's a couple of other power tools I actually used. I used my miter saw, my plunge miter saw, for when I was doing my beading around the edge. But again, you don't need one of them, you could just use the miter block and a wood saw if you want. But I did buy a little nailer to nail in the, uh, but I only used it on the beading around the edge. So that's another thing, but again, you don't need these because you could just buy yourself some tacks and knock them in with a hammer. Okay. And the other power tool I used, multi-tool. And I used this for cutting the door frame the bottom of the door frame to allow the planks to go under the door frame. So uh, I would say this is kind of a must, 
But again, you could use a handsaw. Now I have done a video on installing laminate flooring and you can see all those different ways of looking at that. I'll put a link down in the bottom for installing laminate flooring. So that's the power tools I used. Now all the bits and bobs I used, I bought these little spacers or wedges. You'll see those being used, they're 10 millimeters. I bought a packet of pencils, because I'm always losing pencils. But the hand tools I used are, you need to get yourself one of these, the rubber mallet, because it will save your thumb getting damaged. So you need a rubber mallet. Set square, or a square, you'll see these, me using this, so you'll need one of these. Hammer and chisel, so I use the standard hammer and a chisel for chiseling the wood out. Underneath the uh, door, you could actually use the wood chisel, but there was brick in there as well, so I used that. Obviously, we're going to need a tape measure. You don't have a tape rule, you ain't doing the job. You might need a cork gun with some decorator's cork and silicone in there for going round the edges of your beading or gluing your beading down, so you might need one of them. And specialised tools, again, you might need one of these. This is for laminate floor and the vinyl planks. It's for knocking the edges in. And also, you need your little block. And I can't for the life of me find my little knocking block. I must have left it at mother-in-law's. Anyway, they're the tools and equipment you'll see me using on this video. Like, you don't have to have all this equipment, but it helps. Now these vinyl planks we're going to use are just tongue and groove and they click together. So you can see here we have the product spec which gives us the size in millimetres, it gives us our colour, um, it gives us the quantity in square metres and square feet and most importantly it gives us a batch number. Now you should always try and get the same batch number and if you can't get the same batch numbers then it's always advisable to mix different packs together so you don't get off shades. So make sure you're buying the same batch number. It's important. Now we're going to be installing these vinyl planks on a concrete subfloor. So the existing concrete floor must be cleaned of grease, wax or any other foreign or loose matter. Solvents or other chemicals must not be used to remove existing adhesive residue. Unevenness of the subfloor in excess of 3mm over 3m length must be levelled with an appropriate levelling compound. And now the last thing before we actually dive into getting this installation done is preparation. Remember the P's. Poor preparation produces poor performance. So they say. So make sure you prepare the room before you start laying these things down. Now, we didn't have any space to be able to take the um, settee or the sofa out of the room. So we moved it to one side. And you're gonna see from the video, we, you always kind of start from the left hand corner and work your way down with these planks and you'll see why while we're doing it. But all those, the other things you need to be aware of is the length and the size of the room because you don't want to be ending up with little edges um, and trying to cut little tiny edges or leaving little bits. So again, if you watch my video on how to install laminate floor, I go through the full preparation and also how to order the right quantity of the material. So make sure you check that video out as well while you watch it, ah, well after you watch this one, so you can do the full job. Also, the room temperature is incredibly important and how long you leave these planks in the room to acclimatise. So a minimum of 24 hours, but you want about 48 hours for the planks to be in the room where they're being installed. Also, don't prop them up against the wall as well, otherwise they'll bend. So you need to lay them out flat on the floor. Uh, the best way of doing it is actually take the planks out of the packaging and leave the planks on the floor, spread them out, and leave them to acclimatise in the room of between uh, 15 and 25 degrees to acclimatise, if that's possible. But most of the time it's not possible. Well, that's what we must do with these planks. Finally, now we can get on with it and we can get on to the installation side of this video. 
So we need to work from left to right. So start with the first sheet in the left hand corner of the room, allowing for a minimum 5 to 10 millimeter expansion gap from the wall. The groove side must be facing out from the wall on the length and to the right on the width. To help you get it square and so you don't damage the ends, you can also use these specially designed blocks. Now install the flooring in rows by jointing the left short edge of the next plank to the right short edge of the previous plank. The flooring is jointed by a one piece drop lock system. Lay the panel in the position and install by simply pushing down. Be careful not to apply excessive force that may cause damage. Now pushing down by hand is good and the manufacturers recommend you use your thumb. But it didn't take long before my thumb got sore so that's why I started using a rubber mallet to actually click this floor together along its short lengths. Now once you get to the end of the row you may have to cut the planks to length. We're going to look at that in a little bit more detail in a minute but when you get to cut these planks you can use a few things like I've said. You can use this laminate vinyl floor cutter best 30 quid I've ever spent and it even comes with a little handy stool so you can uh, get the planks at the right height and like I say you can actually use a jigsaw or the manufacturers actually say you can use your craft knife to be able to cut this like I say unless you want to keep your fingers I wouldn't bother doing it that way but once you get more skilled at it the standard knife is quite easy to cut them across its width but not its length so again it just lifts up and clicks in like the rest of the floor and you use your little mallet to tap it home. And then this excess plank we can start the next row. So begin the second row with the cut off end to start the next and subsequent rows. Allow at least 15 centimeters staggering from each seam. For positioning the sections together start with the first tile in the row Raise the tile at a 45 degree angle, insert lengthways tongue into the lengthways groove and lower the section while holding the two together until they are flat and tight together. Close the joints using hand pressure or the rubber mallet which I've used here. Now let's look at cutting these planks in more detail. So the first thing you can see here is I'm using my wedge or my spacer to give me my 8 to 10 millimeter gap around the perimeter. And then I'm using my square to run along the edge of the plank above. Because this is going to give me the correct length. So I'll just score it with the pencil along the square so I can see it. Then take the plank over to the laminate cutter. line it up along the edge and then it's like a guillotine just cut along the pencil mark now I'm left with the two pieces the little one which I need and the longer piece I'm going to use for my next row so like I said you can just click that one in drop it down and then use your thumb or your little mallet just to gently tap it home. And then just make sure it's square. So you can see here, it's just so easy using this guillotine to be able to cut these vinyl tiles in the right place. Now, once you get to the edge of the room or running along the length of the room, this becomes a tricky bit. So what I've done here is I've put the plank I'm going to cut on top of the previous row and then I'm just going to use another plank against the wall and mark along its full length and this will also give me my 8 to 10 millimeter gap along the wall so it's now giving me a line to cut from so I'll just mark with my pencil with an X the bits I don't want and then it's outside and then using my jigsaw don't forget all your PPE equipment your ear defenders your and glasses to protect you and then just use your jigsaw and cut along the line again I could have used a handsaw to do this or I could have used the actual laminate guillotine 
Oh, like the manufacturer said, I could have used a Stanley knife, which I found pretty impossible to do <laughs> with uh, along this length because you've got to find something to snap it over and it's not easy. But a jigsaw, even though I'm trying to make it look hard, is, uh, is quite easy to do. So once you've cut it to length, it's just a matter of going to install it like we've done with all the other planks. So just lift it up in position, making sure you've got your 8 to 10 millimeter gap at the end. Give it a little tap and it's in. So, and we go along and repeat the process. So again, like you see, lay the full plank across the previous plank in line so it finishes in exactly the same spot. Use another spare plank then to just mark right along the edge. And this will give you the angle of the wall as well. So if the wall is running slightly out, you put the plank flat against the wall and it will give you your actual line to cut across. So you will always be following the dodgy wall if there is one. And again, back outside to cut the planks using my jigsaw. And we just follow that till we get to the end of the wall. And again, back inside now just to check and make sure it fits. So again, it's dead easy to clip in. And you can see here the plank is actually running parallel with the wall, allowing my 8 to 10 millimeter gap. Again, tap it in with my little mallet. Now we're coming up now to an even trickier bit. So now we've got to get around this corner. So again, I lie the plank I want to cut on top of my previous plank, making sure that the edge of the plank goes in the position where it needs to click into the previous one. I then get my square and my spacer, and I just put the spacer up against the skirting board to give me my eight to 10 millimeter gap. Use my set square now to run parallel with the corner of the wall and just score along with my pencil along the plank I want to cut. So that's going to give me the length where I need to cut it out from. To give me the width of the gap, again I need to use another plank to put across from the wall to run parallel with the wall and use my pencil again to score along the plank. And that's now given me the part I need to cut out. So again, I've cut it with my jigsaw. Just going to drop it into position. And that should give us the perfect length we require, including our 8 to 10 millimeter expansion gap. Again, tap it in with my little mallet. Make sure it runs parallel. And we can continue now with the next piece. And what I'm doing here is just checking with the beading and just making sure that all the gaps are covered and the expansion gap I've cut is not too wide. Final tricky bit is cutting around the door threshold. So what I'm doing here is I've put a scrap bit of the flooring down and I'm using that as a thickness guide to be able to use my multi-tool now to cut the excess wood from the door frame and the architrave. So I'm just using a multi-tool on both sides now to cut away that excess wood. So right the way through to the brick. And obviously it's not gonna fall off because it's been there a long time and nailed up and screwed and all the rest of it. So I'm just using my wood, um, well, I'm just using my bolster chisel because it's wood and brick this just to get up that excess piece of wood from the architrave and the door casing. I'm just checking with again with my scrap piece of flooring to make sure it goes underneath because we're going to be doing a little bit of tricky cutting here. 
Okay. When I did my original measuring at right at the very beginning, I made sure that when my planks finished, they would finish so I nearly got a full plank here because it's going to make it a lot easier when I'm cutting the door threshold because the last piece I'm going to cut, I'm actually going to use two pieces to make it easier for me to get the threshold in. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two off cuts of planks. I'm going to cut them to length and then I'm going to mark them like I've done with all the rest of it and uh, cut it and just slide it in from left to right to make it so much easier. And I wish I'd filmed this, but I completely forgot <laughs> that I needed to film that bit. So let's have a look at the final plank. So you can see what I mean here. I marked it so it just slid under the door and I used two pieces. There's my joint, which makes it so much easier to uh, put the door threshold in. So that's the door threshold. All we've got to do now is put the bead in to cover up all the gaps around the edge, which will allow for the expansion and the contraction. So let's finish off with the bead in. So that's the beading finished and if you want to know exactly how to cut this bead into length again check out my video on the installation of laminate flooring. Links down below if you need to find that video and you can see how neat now the finish is. And let's have a look at the finished article. Dogs there having a kip and there's the finished floor. So that's how you install this vinyl flooring which is, as you can see, quite easy to do. And that is the end of this video on laying this vinyl plank flooring. So if you've liked this video, why don't you give it a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment below. Don't forget, check out the link for the um, laminate flooring if you haven't already checked it out. But if you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. Only for you new guys, it's Mondays and Wednesdays. Anyway, all I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one guys. Cheers.